Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I am Eli Ben Sasson. I am co-founder and president of Starkware. And I want to talk to you over the next 10 minutes about Starks, facts, not fiction. So we all know that crypto Twitter is very good at being enthusiastic about certain things. For instance, uh, something like Lightning Network. And it is hailed as being the solution that's going to solve all of blockchain scale problems. And this is just one example of an article that came out back in the day. Um, but then what happened within half a year until this day? Well, you know, actually scaling didn't, uh, wasn't actually solved by Lightning in spite of what crypto Twitter has said. So there's a lot of enthusiasm about certain things and there's a lot of, um, you know, misperceptions. And what I want to do in these 10 minutes is talk a little bit about some of the perceptions that are not quite right about uh, our core technology, um, which is uh, ZK Starks and about what it can do for you today. So let's start. And, um, you know, so here's a piece of fiction, um, a statement that says that ZK Stark technology, well, the prover is too slow. In reality, it's the opposite. The ZK Stark prover is the fastest uh, prover of all proof systems out there. It is 20x faster or more than all other proof systems out there when you measure head to head. Here's another fiction. The ZK Stark verification time is too large and that's why you can't use it. Well, in reality, the ZK Stark verifier is just as fast or actually faster than all of the other alternatives. So even when you go to very large computations, the amount of time needed to verify a proof is on the order of you know, three to four milliseconds. And this is actually without any deep optimizations. Here's another piece of fiction. Well, verifying a Stark is just too expensive in gas. And this is partially correct. You should know that among uh, zero knowledge proof systems, Starks are the only ones that actually don't have any dedicated, you know, pre-compiled or subsidy on Ethereum, while other proof systems do have it. So a single Stark indeed in gas cost is roughly 10x more expensive. But however, if you look at amortized gas cost per transaction and you measure it over things that are running in production, then you will see that actually um, the amortized gas cost, which is all that matters, is lower significantly lower than all the other competitors out there. And what you have here is the gas cost, not in thousands of gas, not in kilo gas, but in actual gas. And for instance, in production, this is the amortized gas cost across all of our systems. We have four systems uh, already running in production. And for Validium, which means that the data is off chain, you pay less than 1300 gas per transaction. This is in production, including all the auxiliary data. It's not just the, the gas that's related to the proof. Uh, Loopring, which uses a Roth 16 snark, um, is on the same order of magnitude. And the lowest amortized gas that we actually reached in production was 17 gas, 17 gas per transaction. This was last year as part of the Reddit Bake Off. So in contrast to what the fiction says, the Stark amortized uh, gas cost is the lowest across all systems in production. Now, for, you know, Optimism, Arbitrum, Plunk systems, I don't know the exact numbers of total amortized gas costs, but I don't think they're going to be any better. They're probably going to be worse than what you get with Starks. Okay, now this is, this was the state of affairs up to, you know, roughly one week ago, and now we launched another great Starkware innovation, Sharp, which is shared proving, which means that we take all of our applications and put a single proof that advances all of them. So what you're going to get is even lower amortized gas cost, and this is just now started. So we'll see the gas cost going down even further for our systems in production. And uh, here's another example of something that happened. So about half a year ago, Sorare, which is one of our uh, partners, uh, before it launched with us, it was paying 472 ETH over a week. That amounted at that time to $1.5 million a week in gas alone. And now when it's running with us, it is paying 7 ETH a week. So down from $1.5 million spent on gas uh, for a system in production, with our system, it has gone down to 7 ether a week, one ether per day. So these are systems in production, all of them using our technology. Another example about the scaling of Stark and uh, our L2, no other scaling solution reaches these things. And these are all metrics that have been 
you know, that are operating out there in production. We already settled by now it's close to $12 billion of cumulative trading. We settled over 10 million transactions over multiple different applications. We service more than 100,000 users. We minted 7 million NFTs. The largest mint we did was 600,000 NFTs in production. This was done for Immutable X. Uh, done a few months ago uh, inside a single proof. And we have four customers, all of them operating, and we've launched already one year ago. Now, here's another piece of fiction. ZK Starks rely on new unsafe assumptions. You better worry if you want to use them. In reality, it is the, exactly the opposite. The SNARK systems, be they Groth 16 or Planck, they are the ones that are uh, susceptible to quantum computers. They require a trusted setup or toxic waste and they rely on uh, new assumptions that are pretty new and very little um, economic um, activity has been based on them. So they're not as safe as the Stark that is post-quantum secure, has, is transparent, that's the T in the acronym Stark, no trusted setup, no toxic waste. And the security assumption essentially is the existence of a hash function, which goes back to the 70s. And all of e-commerce is also based on this one assumption. So the point here is if you're building infrastructure for trillions of dollars of value, and you want it to be used for decades henceforth, you want it to be future-proof. So you're better off working with the Stark than with other zero-knowledge proof technologies. Another piece of fiction, I can't build a Stark-based system. It's moon math. You know, only the wizards at Starkware or some other teams might do it. Well, again, this is not, the reality, we have extensive tooling, uh, so you can scan this QR code right now and go into CairoLang.org, start downloading. There's a playground, there's a bunch of tutorials. This is a programming language in which all of our systems were written. The ones servicing you know, billions of dollars of volume, they were all written in this language and you can use it today. It's a Turing complete language, extremely efficient, and you just go there and start programming. It comes with extensive tooling. There's a compiler, virtual machine, ID extensions, tracers, application code. So you can use all of that today. It's, and, and all you need to know is programming, that's it. Here's another piece of fiction. Starks are the long-term solution. We acknowledge that, but they're still three to five years out. Well, I just showed you that the most volume and number of transactions across all layer twos right now in production are actually done over our technology. So are, they are the most, this technology is the most ripe today. But more than that, StarkNet is already out there in alpha mode. It already supports general computation, L1 to L2 interaction, permissionless deployment of transactions and smart contracts, which you can do today. And there's another QR code that you can go there and start working with it. And composability will likely arrive this week. So you will we'll also have that and it will reach mainnet before the end of this year. And it will be much more performant and much earlier to market than all the other L2s that are being worked on. So another thing is that this is an ecosystem that is being built, not just by us, but by a large and growing uh, team of other parties. We have the TurboGeth team with Alexei Akunov and others building the full node. We have a project um, building a compiler from Ethereum Virtual Machine. We have Block Explorers by Nethermind. There are functional language compilers and contract standardization by Open Zeppelin, and this is just the tasting. So this is now something you can join. You are invited to join it. And basically, I hope that all of this sort of facts will convince you that if you're considering scaling and you want a future-proof system that is operational now and will save your users millions of dollars, you want to explore and start using StarkNet and the Stark-based uh, systems. So that's basically my very short speech. Thank you very much.